everyone. So now we are downtown. Uh, we are here at Market View Arts and we are going to tour Ophelia's downtown studio. But before we go into our studio, I just wanted to show you some work, um, some murals that she's working on right now. Uh, this is a piece that she started and it does not have a home yet. But you can see some of the details on here. Really cool. So she's lucky enough since um, there's not a lot of foot traffic in the building right now, she can be working out here in the hallways before we enter her studio. So she has this big space to work as well. And then over here, it's Black Lives Matter mural. This is going to be hung at Bonnie Grimes' gym. She already has an existing mural there now. So this will be going right beside that mural. And then here, just to show you guys, sorry, some of her pieces that she's had actually displayed at Creative York. This kind of gives you guys an idea of the different styles of Ophelia's work. And if you guys are familiar with some of the murals downtown, uh, some of them have some of these elements in the murals as well. You might recognize that. And if you're, if you're interested in purchasing anything, there's her contact information as well. But this space also serves, you can kind of see, like a gallery outside of the artist studios at Market View. Some good prices on these pieces, as you can see. that was, I believe, on display at Creative York as well. Utilizing some found objects that she had like, laying around in her studio at home, she has explained. And that's kind of what she put together. It's awesome. All right, so let's go inside and see her studio. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having us. My pleasure. Come on in. All right, so you guys can kind of get a look. She has some pieces here. So this space is more gallery and display, even though I still do a lot of work here. Mm -hmm. um, lots of actual paintings. Sometimes things are just hanging up in process. But these are a few new pieces that have happened since the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. I can the recognize coronavirus. this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that piece over there in the corner, um, I always have a painting or a piece hanging that uses up leftover paint. So since I hate wasting paint and materials, that's why I'm repainting old canvases, I always have something that at the end of the day, I use leftover paint on. There's no plan or rhyme or reason. It just keeps getting painted until I'm completely done with it. That's great. Um, Utilizing all the supplies. Absolutely. <laughs> Waste not, want not. Yeah. <laughs> I come from poor beginnings, so mm -hmm. I don't waste mm -hmm. anything. Yep. So everything gets reused. I have pieces in the works, um, some things that are done. I have murals rolled up that are still going to be hung. I occasionally do lessons down here with kids. So that's one of my granddaughter's pieces, but I do have people come in and um, do cool. lessons with their kids here. I have three easels here. I have a whole stack of easels over there mm -hmm. and I don't remember if we counted in my home studio I have five easels up so there's always oh, yeah. multiple pieces working at any given moment and that's so, why I produce so many pieces and because so. you like to go from piece to piece yes yes so I like to have cool. lots of things going at the same mm -hmm. time so on any given day I have up eight or nine easels where pieces are being worked on Wow <laughs> yes <laughs> um, more things that are in the works um, over here are some of the start of the new yeah. contiguous. So those two on the right are two of the new sketches. Nice. Um, there'll probably be another 60 portraits just like last time. So tell us about the project last time. I'll kind of highlight the yes. last year or last times. So contiguous is a continuous line drawing where I put the pencil down and I do not pick it up until I finish drawing the person. And the idea was that I could draw with one continuous line all of these people in this community and show them how we are connected by a single line. So we talk about our more our commonalities than what's dividing us. Mm -hmm. And then there was a huge uh, opening reception where all these people were invited 
Um, we had it upstairs, and even though there were only 60 porches, I think we had about 350 people attend. Yeah, that's great. And there were lots of really get-to-know-you activities where people had to go find the person that does this or yes. find the person that does that. So it was a really exciting social event. So we're about to do Contiguous 2. Yes. And this time the focus is on people who are new to the York area. So they get to know some of the people mm -hmm. who have been here a while, they get to know each other. So I'm hoping to have an equally large event this yeah, time. Yeah, which is exciting. And I think I loved when you had the first event for people who didn't know each other to have that kind of ice break, yes. um, icebreaker activity to do and just go up to each other and ask questions. Yes. So it was really, really cool. Um, so yeah, and it's, it's exciting to see um, the second round getting started and I'm excited to learn the new people in town. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't said the people who are new in town or people who have a new role in town. There are people okay. who have been here their entire lives, but they're doing something different yeah, now. Yeah. And people need to know that I'm not just, you know, you know, Marianne who you grew up with. I'm now a community organizer. I am yeah. now this person. So that is new yeah. to York as well. And yeah. I think people need to recognize that. Absolutely. Great. So I'm very I love excited that. about I love the that. whole concept of that project. Yes. So my workstation is always an absolute mess. <laughs> um, I will, busy. I'm, I'm going to admit <laughs> that I have a thing about brushes. Okay. Um, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of brushes. Wow. I keep on new brushes even though I haven't used my old brushes. I feel like that's typical artists. Yeah, and it's like, I just can't turn away from art supplies. And I just open up a new pack of brushes and I'm like, you didn't need another brush, but I have tons of brushes. <laughs> and um, so yeah, it's, it's a thing, but yeah. I, I do love brushes. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a microwave, so if I'm here for long periods of time, I can heat something up and eat it if I need to. And my See sustenance. So I'm here many hours a day, and mm -hmm. I'm here probably every day, even weekends. Wow. Uh, okay. Of the week, I like working in solitude. Um, I like when it's completely quiet. Mm -hmm. And if there are people around, I will put on headphones and listen to music. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I can spend hours. Yeah. Doing this. So. so the difference working at home, obviously, you don't get interrupted, and right now you're not getting interrupted because of the times that we're in. But previous, pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. You, you probably had more interruptions, I'm, I'm assuming, from other artists or people just coming in the building. and Absolutely. Um, so Yeah, so I had to designate the, the days that the building were, was not open. Those were my designated, I'm going to really paint, get something done days. Yeah. And then the days that I knew the building was open, I might just work on touching up something mm -hmm. because of the lack of continuity and time. Yeah. Um, first Friday, I'm just here because I know I'm not going to get a whole lot done, mm -hmm. but I'm here just to have people come through. And it's nice to have that foot traffic. Um, there aren't a whole lot of sales that happen through that, mm -hmm. but at least people get to see your work for the first time. They might come back again, yeah. um, pick up a business card. Um, I tend to sell a lot of things through Facebook. I communicate a lot, um, being yes. a communication specialist. I talk a lot about my work and the process mm -hmm. and the rationale behind it, the storytelling behind it, uh, why a piece gets done. Um, probably not this week, but next week I'm gonna tell the story about the shitty sweet potato train people. Uh-huh, uh-huh, <laughs> yes. So it was actually one of the first ones that happened during uh, COVID. But yeah, so there's there's stories behind them all, and I'll, I'll probably share that story. Nice. And then there's Ennui. Um, yeah, this kind is of a newer, right? sense of, yes. So it was a, an original painting of just half dozen roses, and then it became this sadness piece overlaid mm. on top of it. Now, Ophelia, tell us a little bit about, I mean, I know a lot about your background, but for everyone else who does not, tell us about your early life, where you, did you, were you are you from York, where did, you know, mm -hmm. all of that, where did you study, um, so, and, and, yeah, tell us okay. a little bit about that. Um, originally from Chicago, Illinois, I've never taken an art class in my entire life, or an art lesson. Uh, you hear that, guys? <laughs> Branch out. <laughs> yes. Um, Completely self-taught. I started out in graphic design, doing uh, digital work, mm -hmm. and I specialize in educational publishing. So I've always been in communications. I've always been focused on the pedagogy behind how people learn from mm -hmm. visual images. So you know, what you see in a textbook, you know, I had a hand in, okay, they're gonna be able to read this first, that second, this is important, let's highlight this, let's make sure it's illustrated this way. So I did a lot of that type of work. Um, that's what brought me to York, because I was in educational publishing, 
Um, I had a hand injury where I'd lost use of my hand, so I went into management and then moved here for position in 2000. Mm -hmm. okay. um, at that time, I was predominantly left-handed, so I did a lot of paintings left-handed. Some of these paintings still have a little left-handed touch in them, mm -hmm. like maybe that one does a little bit. So you can see it's a different, my left hand is more uh, impressionist, where my right hand is very cubist. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> um, so then I started really painting in earnest more after I got here and when I switched back over to my right hand, even though I use a little bit of both. But I have a strong background in communications. I have a bachelor's in communications, which is about uh, visual rhetoric and storytelling and the power of persuasion and then a master's in communication where I work with the mediated. So I do, I teach courses in visual rhetoric and media discourse analysis and communication discourse, um, things like that. So I, I incorporate a lot of that into my work. Yeah. So even though I work as an artist, I feel it's really communication. And yeah. the reason why I do so many murals is because it's about communication in public space and representation. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. And what, what, so you came here for a job and you just, Decided to stay in York. Yes. And, the, uh, yeah, the job didn't work out as planned. <laughs> right. um, they sold the company immediately and started moving the jobs overseas. But there was something about being here that I felt like that job was just a vehicle to get me here, but mm -hmm. I was meant to be here. Yeah. I decided to stay. Yes. And I was actually freelance prior to moving here. So I just went wow. back to freelance. Right. And okay. for a long time, I continued to do. Um, graphic design work for publishing companies and then I started doing more fine art mm -hmm. and as I started getting used to the York community and seeing some real um, strong issues and concerns I started doing more fine art to kind yeah. of communicate mm -hmm. and illustrate those things yeah and for those of you who don't know um, I mean when I started working at Creative York which is then York Arts um, Affilia is one of the first artists that I met and starting and working with that organization So it was great to have her and we used to go out and talk to the kids about being an artist And she would show her work, which is one of my I don't know one of my fondest memories about Ophelia and learning about you know her life and her background So which is really awesome and she was also a former former board member at York Arts yes, as yes. well So that may have been back when you first moved right to the area. I'm yeah, assuming. in the early okay. very early 2000s Yeah, yes. yeah, which is really cool. So I've been lucky enough to work with Sophia every, I think, since I started at Creative York, so, yes. <laughs> which is really awesome. So, she's been a pleasure to work with in all areas. So, yeah, so this is her work, guys. She does a lot of cool stuff, and her style has evolved, and she continues to do new things and try new things. I don't know if uh, this piece here actually is being picked up today, yes, right? Yes. So, this is a piece that um, I believe was just like a, just, a landscape, like tree and shrubs, mm -hmm. and then she went over top of it. And I'm yes. gonna talk a little bit more about this. How? Yeah. So it was. Evolved. Yeah. It was just. I just saw when I was out walking one day these tree roots that had branched out so far away from the tree, and it didn't quite work out as I had planned. So again, I took one of my overlay templates and just threw it on top of there, and it became into the wind. Yeah. So um, just cool. being able to layer it. So I'm actually enjoying mm -hmm. layering paintings. to lately and here she did the template over the cats as well which is really cool awesome all right thank you so much Ophelia for letting us into your home and your downtown studios my pleasure it's really pleasure. fun to uh, get to look to, or to see where you're working so we appreciate it Thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys coming in and visiting, um, especially now since I'm getting a lot of visitors, which is okay. <laughs> but at least you can still see what I'm doing and how I separate it and a little bit into the process. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.